I am passing through a strange chapter in the history of my life. I hope I may prove true and faithful to the end that I may join her in the celestial kingdom of God and dwell with her in peace forever. This seems a very personal matter, President. Mr. Callahan, you've come nearly 3,000 miles to write the story of the Salt Lake Temple. If the truth be known, this is the story of the temple, the reason why we build them. Death of my Phoebe was a sorrowful and difficult time for me, but I knew within my heart that she was not lost to me. We would always be man and wife, for we had been married for time and all eternity. Time and eternity? Yes. Marriage is one of the sacred ordinances performed in the temple, and it is not just till death do you part. Do you mean to say that man and wife can remain married even after death? Yes. If covenants are kept, families that are joined together in the temple are united in a relationship through all the eternities to come. I've not heard much of these covenants. I was told that they're secret. Sacred would be a more appropriate term. One of the purposes of the temple is to allow all those who are worthy to make sacred covenants with our Father in heaven. Uh, sacred covenants? How do you mean? Well, in ancient times, Abraham made covenants with the Lord. Uh -huh. And if he lived according to God's commandments, the Lord promised Abraham he would bestow certain blessings upon him. So in the temple, you make similar covenants with the Lord? Yes. Uh, what purpose do they serve? I mean... What are these blessings, then? Brigham Young taught that it is necessary to receive these ordinances in the house of the Lord, so that after departing this life, you may walk past the angels as stand as sentinels, back to the presence of the Almighty Father, and receive exaltation. So, ultimately, the path through the temple leads on to exaltation? Yes. Is it true that you also do this work for the dead? Yes. thought that some people might find that. Many people believe in some form of vicarious work for the dead. The atonement of Jesus Christ was a vicarious work. Whoever accepts Jesus as a savior also accepts the principle of vicarious proxy. Huh. I su suppose I never thought of it quite that way before. Once we receive these ordinances for ourselves, we then return to the temple and make those same covenants in behalf of our ancestors, those who lived in earlier times and did not have the opportunity to do so for themselves. We, the living, act as proxy for the dead. So in a way, you're linking together all of your generations down through the centuries. Precisely. These were the keys and the authority that Elijah the prophet bestowed upon Joseph Smith in the Kirtland Temple. Elijah, uh, I seem to remember a scripture about that, uh, something about... Uh, Fathers and children. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And, and he, he shall turn, turn the heart of the, the fathers, fathers to, to the, the children, children and the heart of the children to the fathers. Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. I think I'm beginning to understand why families are so important to the Mormons. Is this a reason you keep a journal? To have a record of your family history? Well, it is one reason. you a difficult question please well, theoretically speaking is it possible then that even I might enter into the temple and receive these ordinances the temple is for anyone who is living in accordance with the commandments that God has given with respect to the temple but one doesn't just walk into a temple no even in the days of Solomon's temple there were certain laws of purification that had to be met before one was allowed to enter the temple Today, even those who are members of the church must first spiritually prepare themselves and be worthy to receive these blessings. And this is because those who are not properly prepared, such as myself, might not fully grasp their meaning. In their fullness, the realities of eternity are beyond our mortal capacity to comprehend. These covenants are given by revelation, and they can only be understood by revelation. Just as in the ancient temples we spoke of earlier, the temple is a place to which the saints can go and feel they are coming into the presence of the Lord. They learn important truths about their relationship to Him and the purpose of life. 
This is why we build temples. Well, I've heard you've already built others. Yes. Even while work continued on the Salt Lake Temple. Nantai, Logan, St. George. Well, how many more were you built? As many as the Lord requires of us. July 25th, 1887. Brigham Young's successor, President John Taylor, died five minutes to eight o'clock p.m. This lays the responsibility of the care of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints upon my shoulders as president of the church. I pray God, my Heavenly Father, to give me grace equal to my day. Cyrus Edmund Allen, a Utah-born sculptor, was commissioned to create the statue of Angel Moroni for the east center spire of the temple, the capstone. After his design sketches were approved by the First Presidency, he completed a 40-inch plaster model on October the 4th, 1891. The full-scale statue was cast in Salem, Ohio, and stood 12 and a half feet tall. Dallin later claimed that his inspiration for the statue of the angel Moroni came from the writings of the Apostle John. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Well, I suppose I'm not that familiar with the scriptures after all. 